everyone, and thank you for joining us today for the first ever Zen Robotics online event. It's our greatest pleasure to have you here and to have this opportunity to introduce you our new product. But without further ado, let me introduce you our CEO, Wolfgang Schiller. Hello, Wolfgang. Thank you, Anna, and regards back to Helsinki. Hello, everyone. I'm very pleased to welcome you to our Fast Picker online product launch. I'm Wolfgang Schiller, CEO of Zen Robotics, and today I'm joining you from my home office in Munich, Germany. With the online product launch of our Fast Picker, we wanted to take the opportunity and bring ourselves even closer to you, our customers, partners, and friends. And now, let's come to the actual topic of this webinar. With COVID-19, our worldwide economy and also our industry is facing an unparalleled challenge. However, the amount of waste keeps increasing all the time. Still today, we trash excellent materials that actually can be reused again. Turning waste into value is what Zen Robotics is all about. We believe circular economy will be the key factor for that change. At Zen Robotics, we planted the seed of AI-based robotic recycling when our very first waste sorting robot started picking waste already in 2010. Now, a full decade later, robots became mainstream and we are happy to stand at the source of the AI-powered waste sorting revolution. We fulfill our mission by focusing on the close cooperation with our customers, helping them creating value by providing the best waste sorting robotic solutions. We believe in a circular economy built on smart automation and digitalization. To make this happen, Zen Robotics offers a highly integrated solution that is specifically optimized for the purpose of waste sorting. This means we provide an intelligent combination of image recognition, machine learning, waste identification, motion control with firm gripping and throwing. In addition, we also have many years of strong experience in waste processing. All this makes the Zen Robotics solution special because it's optimized for your waste sorting applications. With our existing product, the Zen Robotics Heavy Picker, we provide already a reliable solution for construction and demolition waste sorting. Now, today, we introduce our next generation product, the Fast Picker, for light packaging and household waste, like plastics, metals, papers, and many more. Let my colleagues today at Zen Robotics introduce you the fast picker more in detail. You can expect a product with a flexible footprint, easy installation and retrofit, excellent sorting performance and purity, low operation cost and easy maintenance. Enjoy our Zen Robotics fast picker webinar to discover what the future of robotic sorting holds up on us. Become a part of this thrilling experience. Thanks a lot and back to Helsinki. Thank you, Wolfgang. And now moving forward. Nowadays, everyone seems to be talking about artificial intelligence and multi-layer neural networks, but only few seems to actually understand what it means. Today, joining us, we have Atte, our expert in recognition. Hi, Atte. And could you please explain how the fast picker classifiers powered by AI work? Classifiers basically it's the brain of the system. So it's the one that does the recognition of the materials that are going in the belt. So it's, the, it's a component that takes in the image data from the camera and then produces uh, predictions or inferences uh, then of which object is of which, is of which material. So that's the, that's the secret source. So and that, uh, and that is trained so that we feed it into it uh, image data of known materials 
so we have a library that okay we what what is we have what is uh, color PET what's clear PET what's uh, OCC paper these kind of kind of like fractions uh, so far we have a uh, uh, Right, come to control that just just using the RGB camera is enough for our purposes. So it can it produces very accurate in operation so that we can distinguish between materials. It also has the uh, advantage over the NIR type recognition that we can do of like uh, rec uh, recognize object based on appearances. Object of same material uh, sometimes needs to kind of like be sorted differently. For example, when sorting PE anything that has had uh, toxic contains uh, toxics inside like motor oil cans or uh, pipe cleaners or such they need to be picked out separately from the from the for example food grade pe and when you if you only if you only recognize the material then you cannot do that so that's why we're using uh, normal <laughs> kind of like visual cameras uh, accuracy of our recognition has kind of like to uh, taken a giant leap, so now is it's uh, surprisingly accurate. So basic, 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 basic. You know, nowadays, especially when it comes to uh, sorting polymers, it beats a human looking at the same picture pretty much all the time. Thank you, Ati, for such clear and understandable explanations. And if you still have questions about how our robots perform powered by AI, please write your questions down below in the question section. And now let's look at a few sorting tasks our robots performing as we speak at various sites in Europe. And it's my greatest pleasure to give the field to Juha Mieskonen, our head of sales. Hi, Juha. Hello, um, I'm Juha, uh, chief of sales here at Zen Robotics. Um, and I'm going to next a little bit talk about the various applications that our robots have been designed to perform. And here in this webinar, we are going to focus on the fast picker, which is for light packaging waste type of um, a material uh, for small and light objects. Uh, and on high volume line, it's, it's typically, uh, let's say, situated at, at the quality, quality control station or, or in a residue recovery line. Uh, and then on the lower volume lines uh, can also be let's say the main uh, sorting system uh, to replace manual labor or, or some other machines. Uh, uh, but before going into that, uh, I'm gonna just a little bit talk about uh, our heavy series robots as well. Uh, as you may know, uh, we have uh, had artificial intelligent, intelligence powered robotics already for a decade now um, and we started with, with the, uh, let's say, more challenging world of, of bulky waste of CND, CNI, scrap sorting uh, on really, let's say, on sorting heavy materials. And here uh, we utilize still the similar, same, let's say, approach. So we have sensors on, on these very challenging tasks. We, we have more sensors. Uh, we have hyper hyperspectral imaging cameras. Uh, so basically near infrared and also the uh, let's say visible light light uh, cameras as well um, then we have uh, multi-coil metal detectors uh, and and 3d laser scanners and and then such um, let's say um, sensors which we, we we then use to gather information from the various objects uh, on on those on, on recycling facilities on sorting belts and then this information is is really fed into the the brain, the, the AI, and and then for let's say that's that's the way we've been doing it for for a decade already um, with the uh, with the big machine with the heavy picker. We are mainly sorting out uh, CND waste, so we're splitting that to various subcategories, say uh, wood sorting, for example, A, B, C, and D wood uh, separately or all together or, or, or together. Um, then we are picking out uh, your various um, alloys of, 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 um, of steel, of metals, uh, different fractions, subfractions of inert materials, bricks, tiles, uh, concrete, natural concrete, uh, or rather air concrete, natural stones, uh, yutong as it's known, um, asphalt, different, uh, different let's say, subcategories of, of inerts. 
And then uh, plastics, of course, um, an, an easy task to pick out by polymer, by, by color, by shape, uh, by a combination of these. Then we, we, let's say, have various other applications on the CNI side, so commercial and industrial waste side of, of the business in uh, dedicated, uh, let's say, rigid plastics, bulky plastic sorting systems on, 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 on uh, plastic bag by color uh, sorting systems and, and such, uh, many, many other others as well. But the uh, point was not to focus on, on that now, but just to mention that we have had uh, this AI technology uh, coupled in with, uh, let's say, the bleeding edge, high-tech sensors already, and sensor fusion technology already for uh, about a decade. Um, in 2014, we released, the, the, let's say, the modern version of the, of the heavy picker, which is really designed for, for this task. We did try different uh, off-the-shelf products, uh, robots, manipulators, but soon found out that they are not really fit for, fit for job. And, and here also the fast picker is now, let's say, uh, benefiting from this heritage and the know-how of the, of the heavy picker and of, of our work. Uh, the, let's say the knowledge of, of waste. We have an incredible amount of data, of course, over the last decade um, regarding the topic. And here the fast picker is then, let's say, a simplification of, of the heavy picker uh, in the sense that it is relying on on it's very smart, uh, relying on, on, on an RGB camera though alone, a little bit similar like us human beings. So we also typically, let's say at best, have, a, have an RGB sensor, but then um, are still able to distinguish between, let's say, uh, PET drinking bottles from, from PET tray materials or from washing detergents, which then typically have the same PET uh, layer on the top, but uh, have a multi-layer structure. So let's say the fast picker is made for similar tasks that humans are currently able to perform. So basically adding, increasing um, uh, the, the performance or, or kind of uh, breaching the gap uh, that normal optical sorters leave. Uh, and, and, and here jumping now then to the first application that I'm gonna talk about, which is a very typical one, uh, plastic sorting. So, so looking at uh, dry mix recyclables line uh, or, or light packaging waste line, whatever uh, you want to call it, single stream collection. Um, and, and then here specifically in this video, uh, the robot uh, is, is on a, on a high uh, volume line where you have several stages of optical sorting uh, in, the, in the front end of it and screening. And then the material arrives to the uh, uh, quality control station in, in around about 80% purity uh, by weight, uh, which is quite typical in the end of the day for, for let's say, optical sorting, which is then more about uh, deterministic recognition rather than uh, recognizing by, by shape. Of course, that side is developing as well quite, quite quickly, quickly too. Nice to see. Um, here, so the robot uh, is receiving, or the, let's say the picking station is receiving um, the, the uh, plastic flow uh, on, on four dedicated lanes. It's a very compact uh, picking station, modern uh, split belt or multi-channel belt type uh, system. And here you have uh, high density polyethylene, you have colored, mixed colored PET bottles, you have uh, drinking cartons or Tetra as, as it's known. And then you have transparent uh, PET bottles as well. And, and the robot's task in this particular video is to do QC on the drinking carton line. So it is positively picking all the uh, mixed color and transparent uh, PET bottles from the uh, drinking carton line and then throwing them uh, onto the correct lane. So on the late lane on the, on the let's say, left-hand side. Um, and then it's picking the remaining of the trash that is in the uh, drinking carton uh, line and then, and then pulling that out to the other side of the belt to a designated um, drop off shoot. So, and by doing this, it's then really, let's say, doing the final step that's required uh, to go from 80% rough, let's say 80% purity into, um, we, when talking about drinking uh, or um, Tetra Pak, um, the aim here is about, uh, in fact, about 97% purity, but of course the target varies um, depending on the commodity, can be 
95, can be 98, 99, depending on the need. Of course, it's always yield versus capacity, as we all know here. Uh, nevertheless, it's doing the final step um, after the optical sorter so that uh, the material, the commodity in the end uh, is in the right quality indeed, so that it has the, the value that's that, uh, or let's say it complies with the regulation or if it's just sold on an open market has the highest possible value. Thank you, Juha. And now please welcome Rainer Ren, our sales representative for Scandinavian and Benelux markets, UK and US. Hi, Rainer. The fiber sorting application is uh, pretty interesting. And uh, there you can see uh, actually AI, high IQ AI in hardcore action. Uh, we are with the robot sorting after an OCC screen, the unders, screen unders that have gone through optical sorters, but uh, there are still uh, a lot of contaminants, which are, uh, for instance, the brown uh, OCC, uh, there is um, folding boxes, uh, there are egg cartons and such uh, contaminating uh, fibers. And the robot task is to pick those from the stream of, of nose or the ink. And uh, we knew on beforehand that the, picking the brown OCC is, is simple and that we can do very well. You need a lot of suction power in the gripper to be able to really pull it out. It can be rather big pieces of, of brown uh, corrugated cardboard. So that works fine. But uh, what was a, a very positive surprise was that the robot has the capability to distinguish, to see and pick the uh, gray fiber also, which is the folding boxes like uh, cookie boxes and coffee filter boxes and pizza boxes and beer boxes uh, and so on. And uh, as we know, they, uh, this gray fiber is not visible. Those who haven't noticed it, ch check inside your morning cereal box. It's gray on the inside, but it's heavily printed on the outside and, and this fiber we can pick without actually seeing the gray fiber. So the amazing ability of the robot is to uh, be able to distinguish, to identify these folding boxes based on, there is some uh, common, there are some common design features. So even if the robot would have not seen uh, gray folding boxes, it, it has uh, uh, understanding of what kind of boxes are made out of gray fiber based on the looks, based on the print, on the labels, on on something. This is the, the mystery of AI in hardcore action, as I said. And uh, sometimes the, the, uh, there can be uh, 20, 30 centimeters of material on the sorting belt, uh, as we see in paper uh, sorting very often, and that's fine. It's okay for the robot. It picks what it can see. So it picks from the surface. Uh, if you want to really well sort out those uh, not desired fibers, you would need to spread the material on a wide sorting belt and you would need to have, of course, as many robots as you need for your task. So I think this is a very interesting application, specifically for AI. Uh, AI IQ is important. Some uh, AI is robust and can uh, generalize very well. Then there are other kinds of AIs that are not that robust in the concerning the generalization capability. So a few words about the HDPE quality control applications with the Zen Robotics robots. The typical situation is such that there are uh, optical sorters that are shooting at all HDPE uh, plastics, but as they cannot distinguish uh, between non-recyclable HDPE and recyclable HDPE, you will actually have contaminants there, such as motor oil cans, uh, silicon cartridges, uh, toilet cleaner bottles, or for example, Heinz uh, non-stick uh, ketchup bottles, so, and foils, plastic film, those need to get out. And here, again, the AI of the robotic system is amazing, it distinguishes these objects by the, the shape or brand or some other features. And the robot picks very well out those objects from the stream of HDPE, thus creating a, a really marketable high quality HDPE fraction. Thank you, Rainer. And now we're going to hear about another exciting application of Zen Robotics Fast Speaker. And welcome back, Juha. 
yeah, and here I'm, I'm uh, back to now to uh, talk about another uh, sorting task or application, uh, which is also a very interesting one. So we have applied the fast picker to an eddy current line. So really to increase the uh, value of the uh, recovered uh, non ferrous uh, but conductive material flow. And in this particular case, the, the highest commodity that comes out uh, is UBC, so used beverage cans, and that needs to be in a high high purity. The quality needs to be high for, for, the, for the value to be high. And what we are doing here, as you may, of course, all, probably all viewers, listeners know, that an eddy current repels uh, conductive but non-ferrous materials, but while doing so, of course, it also ejects other materials, uh, let's say some um, drink cartons that may have some aluminium layer inside or, or uh, cigarette uh, packs and, and, and different things like that. And of course, by accident, also some plastic foils and, and other contaminants. And here the robot uh, has two tasks. So firstly, it's picking out the non-UBC. So objects and uh, let's say uh, objects like hairspray, for example, which obviously I know, don't know much about. Um, and another, let's say, iPads and other aluminium or, or anyhow non-ferrous objects uh, that are non-UBC, so are not uh, uh, used beverage cans. And then additionally, it's pulling out all the trash, so that the, um, the plastic foils and, and whatever you may have in the flow, so that the, uh, let's say, uh, right quality drinking uh, or the used beverage cans are then left on the belt. And that works, let's say, there on that application really superbly um, and really increasing the value. So the customer really gets an added value now from the ferrous fraction and a much higher price for, for the uh, clean uh, beverage can fraction. And then on the other hand, still a very nice, uh, let's say, non ferrous fraction, which still is mostly aluminium as, a, as another, like a mixed fraction. And then the trash can, of course, be used in uh, RDF production or, or, or elsewhere, or, or can be further, of course, treated uh, by, by robots to, to, let's say, sort it uh, by, by polymer or, or by some other category, depending on how much of what is in that, typically. And additionally, of course, like in all of the applications, the robots are naturally helping now to keep essential services running uh, with all these, well, let's say with the current times of uh, having the need to uh, have social distancing and, and all of that. Of course, the robot is a perfect solution, a perfect addition to, to a, a facility that has modern technology and, and, and really uh, when the operators really want to run the plant hands-free, unmanned, this is the solution. Thank you, Juha. And now, last but not least, another valuable member of our sales team joining us today from Graz, Austria, Thomas Balt. Welcome, Thomas. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a pleasure for me to talk to you today about um, recovery rates and uh, recovering recyclables from the residue streams of any kind of light packaging uh, waste sorting facility or MSW uh, a sorting facility. This is one of the applications that we do with our robots. We have done that the very first time at a very forward thinking, of course, still confidential customer in, in Austria, where we got the, the task to install a robot in the residue recovery line. And the goal was to take back, to, take to, to recover as many recyclables as we can with one robot and of course those as you know uh, residue lines are quite crowded there's many objects on the belt so the robot always has a challenge to identify in a more or less pile of materials the recyclables that means uh, there's always a little bit of waiting time from time to time uh, between picking objects what we did uh, at this customer in the first place was to always uh, take take out two different recyclables. On one side, uh, let's say there's chutes, as my colleagues already explained to you earlier, there's a chutes on either side of the, of the sorting belt. That means we always take out two different uh, kinds of recyclables. 
In this case, we started out with beverage cartons, also known as Tetra Pak. And the challenge, as you know, is not only to take the recyclables out, but to retake the, take them out in a quality that allows to mingle those quantities with the already final products that are waiting in some bunkers because nobody could afford to rerun, to reprocess that material one more time. That means that the name of the game, the challenge really is to take out as many recyclables as possible and doing that in a purity that is already in line with the, with the requirements by the oft takers, by those ERP systems that are managing the recycling and the, the collection and the recycling of packaging materials like DSD in Germany, ARA in Austria, CTO in France, and the list goes on. As said, uh, always two pairs of recyclables at, at a time. In Austria, it was first um, Tetra and uh, uh, HDPE, and then the customer said he, he would prefer uh, to, to focus on PET color bottles and that means that what we are doing now is to take out PET bottles of color blue and color green but basically we could choose any combination and of course as you see also on the belt one robot is not nearly enough to take out all the recyclables that are still contained at the end of the line which brings me to a very important topic which we should all have in our focus, in our close focus, that is the EU circular economy package, and which is a very ambitious, let's say, um, written goal, let me call it a written goal of recycling rates that we want to achieve. By 2025, the recycling target for plastic packaging, I'm speaking here about plastic packaging, is set by 50%. By 2030, it is even higher by 55%. And you have to take into consideration that at the moment throughout Europe, in most of the countries, we have actual recycling rates between 20 to 25%. That means we would need to double our recycling targets, which means there is a lot of challenge ahead of us, many, many steps that we need to take together. But I'm deeply convinced that robotic sorting can play an important role to bridge that gap and to make us all move closer to that goal. Thanks for your attention. Bye-bye. Thank you, Juha, Reiner, and Thomas for such inspirational and visual explanation of our sorting tasks. And I hope our audience has a lot of questions after your presentation. And before we proceed to our question and answers session, we want to show you the first speaker itself. And today we have with us Aku, and he is at our testing facility. Hi, Aku. Hi. Today we are here at the center of this testing facility near Helsinki Airport, doing factory assembly testing for two fast picker robots before sending them to our clients. As you can see, they are very compact in size and have high picking performance in the area you install them. Now I'm going to show you a little bit more of the mechanics. You can access the robot area with this service door. You can do most of the maintenance from this service door. You don't have to stop the belt while performing maintenance to the linear axis or the gripper. You can even get a little bit closer to the parts you need with this lower visual door. The linear axis in X direction and Y direction have a lubrication cartridges that are easy to change. You can also see if the belts are worn out. The creeper has collision ma management. So if there are strained objects on the belt, it doesn't break. Thank you, Aku. So now when we showed you how easy it is to maintain our robot, 
It's my honor to introduce you Harry Holopainen, Zen Robotics Head of Technology. He will explain why Fast Picker Suction Gripper is indeed a reliable technology. Hi, Harry. Hi, I'm Harry Holopainen. I'm the Head of Technology at Zen Robotics. Uh, you now, when we first uh, started developing Suction Gripper, uh, the main goal was actually how to make sure that it keeps on working. And of course, uh, in the lab, uh, things like this, they always work, uh, but the actual waste plant is a very different uh, scenario. And uh, then when we try to figure out what would be the most likely thing that uh, would stop working, and uh, we took a hard look at this uh, long uh, suction tube going from the vacuum pump all the way to the gripper, and we're pretty sure that that's going to get clogged, and uh, then uh, cleaning it up will be quite a nightmare. So there's going to be small pieces of cardboard, small foils, uh, video cassette tapes, uh, sticky residue, and if you're lucky, it's going to be dog food. If you're not, it's going to be something else. So our solution was that uh, we'll just get rid of that problematic long tube and uh, instead we'll use an uh, ejector. So ejector is a small device like this. Um, it basically turns pressurized air into vacuum. It has a, a standard 12 millimeter uh, pneumatic feed and uh, works on the uh, normal uh, compressor. An ejector has many great qualities for waste picking. Uh, firstly, it has a very high gripping force. We can easily lift and throw bricks. Uh, uh, with an ejector. And secondly, an ejector is also very fast to react. Uh, gripping and letting go happens in a tiny fraction of a second. Uh, now combined uh, with our, our real-time motion control for the robot arm, we can accurately throw things up, uh, to save time. And after all, uh, there's really no time to waste in the waste picking uh, robotics. And uh, back to the original goal, uh, how will this gripper keep on working as promised? Uh, firstly, there are no moving parts. Uh, it's very simple, uh, fully user serviceable. Uh, the whole mechanism is designed to withstand constant collisions uh, in a hostile environment. It's virtually clock free. Uh, it does self cleaning in three stages. Uh, if the gripper needs any attention, uh, then and only ten, then it will notify the operator. And most sites uh, manage uh, just with the scheduled daily maintenance, uh, which takes just a minute or two. And uh, to conclude, uh, just like our robots, uh, our suction gripper is a unique combination of software and hardware, which is specifically designed for the uh, needs uh, of waste recycling uh, robots. And we're quite proud of what we have accomplished. And I would like to give the field to our CEO, Wolfgang Schiller, for the farewell words. Welcome, Wolfgang. Thanks, Anna. Thank you for having us and walking us through the Fast Picker webinar. In our today's webinar, we have uncovered the latest insights about the Zen Robotics Fast Picker. We introduced today's and future Fast Picker sorting application and showed its unique features and benefits. Also, you probably have discovered that AI and robots have finally brought industrial automation to waste management. Now, the waste industry can benefit from the same possibilities as manufacturing industry has exploited for decades. Robots, AI, and waste make perfect business sense. Robots are an investment into the future, an investment that pays itself back with increased efficiency and higher quality of recyclables. And finally, please keep in mind, helping you turning waste into value is what Zen Robotics is all about. I would like now to thank all attendees for your attention and participation. I hope you enjoyed this webinar very much and you are excited as we are. It was a pleasure to have you joining this event. For any further questions and probably a live demonstration, Feel free to contact our sales teams or reach out to us via www.senrobotics.com. Finally, stay safe and healthy and take care about your families and colleagues. All the best and goodbye.